They say that crime doesn't pay, but Ronnie Biggs was willing to find out for himself. Hey everybody, it is Wednesday. It is time for Bible study. Grab your Bibles, join us, 7 p.m. We'll be downstairs in the Fellowship Hall in person. Join us there, or you can join us via Zoom. All the information in the description of the video here. And tonight we're going to be discussing things like crime and punishment from the 19th and the 20th chapters of the book of Proverbs. And uh, I, I mentioned uh, crime and punishment. There is this proverb, it's chapter 20, verse 17, that's a warning that bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be full of gravel. And there have, of course, been plenty of people over the years who are willing to, to test that out. They, they discovered the sweetness, but they also discovered, well, the gravelly bit. And Ronnie Biggs was one of them. If you don't know the name, Ronnie Biggs was part of a gang of about 15 men who on the 8th of August, 1963, pulled off the biggest robbery ever executed in the United Kingdom, cash anyway. Uh, they robbed a royal mail train. They robbed a royal mail train that was carrying currency, large amounts of currency, and they walked away with 2.6 million pounds sterling. Now, that may not sound like that much. I mean, it's a lot of money. It may not sound like that much, but keep in mind that that was 1963. That's the equivalent today of 55 million pounds, or if you were to convert it, $78 million. $78 million. And Ronnie Biggs, unlike most members of the gang, by the way, almost none of that money was ever recovered by authorities. Ronnie Biggs, unlike most members of the gang, managed to escape arrest. In fact, he managed to flee the country. He fled to Rio de Janeiro, where there was no automatic extradition treaty, and lived like a king in exile for three decades. But then something happened. What happened? Very simply, Ronnie Biggs' money and Ronnie Biggs' health started to run out. In the end, uh, he returned to the United Kingdom in 2001 uh, because he was broke and he was sick. And he returned under a fairly pitiful agreement with the government that if he came back, they would make sure that he received medical care. He would serve out the remainder of his prison sentence, but he would be allowed to write a book in prison and keep the proceeds from the book in order to make sure that his family was taken care of after his death. In the end, he made essentially nothing. And he did, in fact, die a broken man about eight years ago. Crime, in the end, did not pay for Ronnie Biggs. In fact, the bread gained by deceit was sweet to a man, but afterwards, his mouth was full of gravel. For more wisdom from God's word, we want to invite you to join us again, 7 p.m. Be there. Hope to see you, and God bless.